What's up guys, it's Brian with MTMMix.com Bringing you guys a video today about an issue that I really had trouble with when I first started mixing uh, Especially rap vocals and that was bringing vocals to the front of a mix and making them cut through properly Without having those harsh S's or harsh breath sounds in the mix. So I'm gonna hop on the screen I'll show you guys exactly what to do to solve that issue one of the tracks on. I'm gonna play a little bit for you and I'm gonna explain the setup of everything and then we'll get to it. Uh, off the tongue. Spent a lot of shit popping off this week, eager to put my practice into play. 50% of my cup is nothing but air, and the other half is in the sex. Nines, dimes, ten and a halfs on display. Getting the feeling this feeling's gonna stay. It's half past 12 as I delve into the sauce, thinking of how we got here. Let me back up. Started with studio breakout. All right, so you get the idea. Um, super low end track, but I mean, for the sake of making it cut through, you're going to be using, or you should use this technique, regardless of what the situation is. So you'll see right here, he has two lead tracks. Um, it's probably because when or whoever tracked it, instead of punching, they just made two tracks, which is fine. I just sent both of these to bus one. So I mean, I should have labeled these. Let me do that real quick. So this is your lead vocal so technically this auxiliary bus are both of these combined to simple things up and I also sent this uh, verse stack as well but in reality once I get further into this mix I will take this off um, and do its own processing on it now the first thing that I did um, and that I always do is I do reductive EQ or subtractive EQ um, I always just roll off the top end, get rid of some boominess, and then that piercing high frequency that you hear a lot. Don't worry about this guy. This is just, I was just filtering something out to hear it. Um, but yeah, I, I always get rid of the low end because there's a lot of low end in vocals that you don't necessarily hear, and it just cre uh, creates a, a problem, especially with this track since it's so low end. It creates a problem further down the mix when you're mixing the bass, which I'd bring the, the, uh, the stems into this track. Over here, I got the boxiness frequency. It's usually around 500. This one was a little lower. It was around uh, 346. So um, I notched some of that out. And then again, that piercing frequency around 5K. This one is 4400. Um, so that's the first thing that I do. The next thing that I do is I usually bring up an FET compressor or this 76 from Waves. Um, the reason being is because a lot of the 76 emulations and in real life, the, the hardware counterpart, um, they have a really, really fast attack, which is why people use it for rap. In the olden days, people always used distressors for rap because you could dial in very fine-tuned uh, parameters and get the, the exact attack that you wanted for your vocal, so you could really get a super fast attack. But the 76 doesn't really have a, a, a slow attack, rather. Um, so there's nothing where you could really mess up on it. And as well as FET compressors. Um, let me see if I could bring up an example off the spot. Uh, maybe not. I'll, I'm going to do an uh, entire tutorial based on FET compressors down the road. Um, but what FET compressors are, they're, it's, it looks very similar to this. It has the input knob, it has attack release, but it has a threshold knob as well. And they also are known for their very, very, very fast attack on the vocals. So I just suggest bringing up a compressor that has a fast attack um, or just bring up a compressor if you don't have anything in those realms. Just bring up something and set the attack to something very fast. And just styling your compression. I'm not going to do a full video on this full vocal, the the effects that I did on this track, just because this isn't actually what makes it cut through. It is part of it, but this isn't what I'm going to be explaining today. So dial in your compression. Um, let me mute these guys, and I'll play this for you. Also, mute the beat as well. Uh, spent a lot of shit popping off this week, eager to put my practice into play. 50% of my cup is nothing but air, and the other half is in the sex. Nines, dimes, ten and a halfs on display. So you can see that it does drive some energy into the vocal, as well as keeping the body in the vocal, which is important. The next thing that I do is I add some tone. Um, you can see all I did here is really just a little boost around uh, 170 hertz. 
and then I raised the high end only one decibel just to try to make it cut through. Um, but I wasn't focusing on that. And then I just made sure that none of this low end got boosted as well. So then after that, I just added this de because a lot of the S's were sharp on the track. Now to make it cut through, this is the whole point of this video. In a normal situation, I would just duplicate the lead vocal track, but being that there's two lead vocals, um, I just made an auxiliary track again, and I sent the lead vocal right here. I did a, a pre-fader send to bus to auxiliary two. So I'll lead call this. What it is, it's parallel compression. Now, I did a lot of videos over uh, at different sites regarding parallel compression, especially when it comes to mixing beats and how you can make your drums really crack and uh, push it to the front of the mix to make like sort of that headbanger kind of drum drum break out of a uh, virtual samples or digital samples. This is very, very similar. Um, and really, it's hard to mess up because at the end of the day, this is just going to be something that you're layering. So the first thing that you do is you do send your lead vocal or duplicate it and make sure that you have this pre fader button on. So that way, uh, it doesn't matter what the fader is for the lead vocal, you're sending the full signal, um, you could hold option. If you have your fader down here, which it will when you start off, if you hold option, just click on it, it'll jump up to zero. So it'll be zero decibels exactly. So you can close that out, make sure that your input for this parallel compression auxiliary bus is set to whatever you're sending it to. So bus two, bus two. Now don't worry about the outputs as well. So now the next thing that you want to do is focus on this parallel compression. So if you hit play, mute that and uh, mute your lead vocal. This will be to check to make sure you did everything right. So if you hit play, spin a lot of shit popping off this week, eager to put my practice in the play. 50% of my cup is nothing but air and the other half is in the sack. All right, cool. So you can see that this send effect is working and you are getting your signal to this auxiliary bus. The first thing you want to do with parallel compression is squash the hell out of it. So what I did as I brought up this, uh, the Puke Child from Waves as well, I'm a big fan of Waves. For this, you really can use any compressor. Um, I like using older emulated plugins because you could get sort of character and analog warmth out of it, even though it's in a digital plugin. So you can see here, I have my time constraint set all the way to the max at six. Uh, my threshold is around uh, one o'clock, two o'clock or so at the, at the six mark. And my input gain, I'm driving a little bit, not too crazy, but you'll see once I hit play, you'll see this meter is actually going all the way to like peeking out almost. So I'll play for you and you guys can hear it. Spin a lot of shit popping off this week, eager to put my practice into play. 50% of my cup is nothing but air, and the other half is in a sec. Cool. And now I'm just going to do this with a different compressor, um, just so I could give you guys an example. How it doesn't really matter if you have these plugins or not, just so you could throw in whatever compressor you want. Here's the, uh, the Soft Tube Tube Tech Seal 1B emulation. And what you want to do is the same exact thing. So this defaults out of six. 0.0 ratio you could even turn that up maybe a little bit even to eight since this is a parallel compression track so this is at eight ratio right now again a fast attack um we'll go fast release and then we're gonna dial in this threshold as we play it spin a lot of shit popping off this week eager to put my practice into play 50 percent of my cup is nothing but air and the other half is in the sack Nine and now just dial in this gain knob to make it so that way you are back at the same level. So right now there's around 7 to 10, actually honestly probably 10 to 20 decibels of gain reduction. So we're just going to boost this guy. Spin a lot of shit popping off this week, eager to put my practice into play. 50% of my cup is nothing but air and the other half is in the sack. Nines, dimes, ten and a halfs on display. Getting the feeling this feeling's gone. Cool. So there you have that. Um... Now this is just your parallel compression track. It is super squashed. Spin a lot of shit popping off this week, eager to. So the next thing that I did, um, I'm not sure if this is gonna sound as good with this compressor, but um, I threw on my um, an EQ channel again just to get rid of some of the muddy frequencies that were brought up from the parallel. Spin a lot of shit popping off this week, eager to put my practice into play. 50% of my cup is nothing but air and the other. So you could hear the slight difference. Now, 
the next thing that I do um, is I again bring that uh, the instrument back into pl the instrumental back into play. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this. I'm going to start off with a fader all the way down. Um, you can't see it. I have a little fader board here, but you can see right here um, the volume is changing. It right now it's at zero it's at, or negative infinity. Um, so I'm going to start with it completely off, and I'm just going to play that beat. And raise it until all the frequent I hear all the frequencies of the vocal cutting through the beat enough, but not so it's acting as the main vocal. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. That's just the parallel compression track, which actually sounds pretty good alone. But the next thing that I'm going to do to add some of that dynamic back, but making sure that it cuts through, is I'm just going to bring this lead vocal back in. And now the easiest way to combine both of these is setting up another auxiliary track. I have it aux3. I'm going to relabel it again. And sending both your lead vocal and your parallel compression track to this auxiliary bus. So I'm going to do combined vocal. Nope, excuse that. <laughs> so I have combined vocal right here. Um, so now I can control the volume of both the parallel compression track and the lead vocal. It's the same thing if you grouped these two guys together down here in your group section. But um, I am going to be doing some effects going on down here. Um, ignore that second one. So now we're just going to play it. We're going to bring this lead vocal back up. I'm going to start with that add infinity and I'm going to raise it until it sounds good. So right now, just that parallel compression track is going and we're going to just dial this uh, lead vocal track in. Spent a lot of shit popping off this week. Eager to put my practice into play. 50% of my cup is nothing but air. And the other half is in the sex. Nines, dimes, ten and a half on display. Getting the feeling this feeling is gonna stay. It's half past 12 as I delve into the sauce. Thinking of how we got here. Let me back up. Back up. Alright, cool. So you can hear right away. It sounds 10 times better. No matter what, you know that your vocal is gonna be cutting through because your parallel compression track is already cutting through without the lead vocal, without this lead vocal track. So no matter what. You could feel confident that your vocal will cut through the beat. So now, the next thing in the... Well, I did two more things. I just added this de because when you combine this parallel compression track, it introduced a little bit of S's in there. So I just dialed in this, the, uh, the de from Waves. Um, and then I added this send to uh, this Abbey Rhodes plate plugin, also from Waves. But you could use any kind of reverb. So I'm going to play this beat for you, or the, the track for you right now. Um, again, this mix isn't finished. Um, you got into these, these crazy stacks that he has over here in the hook. So I hope you guys learned something. Uh, definitely practice parallel compression on your vocals. A lot of people don't do it, but it is very useful. So just be sure to check that out. And let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Um, just shoot a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe and all that YouTube stuff. So I'll talk to you guys in a few days or so. Uh, off the tongue. Spent a lot of shit popping off this week. Eager to put my practice into play. 50% of my cup is nothing but air. And the other half is in the sex. Nines, dimes, ten and a half on display. Getting the feeling this feeling's gonna stay. It's half past 12 as I delve into the sauce. Thinking of how we got here. Let me back up. Back up. Started with the studio break, got four sips simply to celebrate our freshness. I seen the silhouettes from outside and understood how she trumped that guest list. Guess this.